In our last video, we created a library um, called MPH Data, and we saved a file or put a file in there called Rank Quartile. So MPH Data dot Rank Quartile. We're going to use this MPH Data um, area again for addressing a particular question that you may encounter. So in the previous video, we focused on how you may use uh, the ranking aspect of our, or of SAS Studio for quartiles, quintiles, um, deciles, or whatever. But you may have situations where you have variables that need to be, or a variable that needs to be created that has a ranking system that doesn't follow a quartile approach that has specific start points and endpoints. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to uh, show you, but I have to pull this off the screen so that you can see what we're going to do here. So if you are going to be making those categorical determinations, you'll need to either write those down or have them somewhere aside. So I can still see them, but uh, you cannot. Now, what are we going to do to do this? Well, I don't know of an exact program that will allow you to do it through drop-down menus. So I have to do the manual program. So there's two ways to get there. You can use the utilities and then go down to program, or I can click on this thing here under server files and folders and click on SAS program. So now I have to write my own program here and tell it how to do what I want it to do. And I don't know if I can bring both screens up there. I can try. Um, to put them both up here at the same time for your for your viewing. So let's see. Yeah, it may not let me. We can try to shrink this and see if I can get them both up there at the same time for you. I'm going to try. All right. You can see them both up there. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to have to tell. SAS where we want the data to go. So we could type in work dot whatever, but in this case we've got our own library instead of work library, we got an MPH data. And then what do we want to call the file? So we've already created one called rank quartile dot SAS uh, 7 BDAT. We'll just call this one rank quartile, you know, two. So that one doesn't have a number. We'll give this one a number. All right, after every statement, I have to have the semicolon. Next, I have to tell SAS where the data are coming from. So set, and then here are my options. So I'm gonna double click on MPH data, and then the file is that only one that's in there. When I hit dot, it auto-populated this from my previous work. Um, if I would have wanted to work from the big combined one, I can do that. Set um, work, click on that, and then dot. And there was one called like import or something, if I remember right. But but I want to work with my own. Set mph data dot rank quartile. Next. I have to um, tell it what I'm wanting to create, what variable am I wanting to create, and um, I can uh, also set or deal with the missing values that may exist. So the variable I want to create, we're going to call it income 5, because I want to have 5 levels. And it will equal dot for the missing data. So if there's missing data, you know, there are dot. So nothing equals the dot right there. Next, we have to then tell it a, a series of what are called if and then statements. So if, and we can work from the bottom up or the top down. It doesn't matter, but I'm gonna work from the bottom up. I'm gonna say if household income is, and then over here, 39,300 or less. So if it's less than or equal to 
39,300. Then, and it puts it in blue, which is nice. It tells you that the command's being read correctly. Then, income five, that variable I'm creating here, will equal a number. And I could make it zero, or I like to use one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna say make it equal to one. I have to finish it with a semicolon. Now I have to do if household incomes uh, equal to something. Now, I could do a series of command and replace and run the program over and over and over again, but um, SAS allows us to kind of build in these like middle values. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if household income is between two values. So how am I going to do that? Well, this value is 52,400. So I'm going to say if 50 let's see um, actually the first one is 390 we're going backwards so we're going from lowest to highest so if we'll go with um, 39300 all right let me double check this other command real quick. So it has to be 39,300 or less for this one for cat one. This one we're gonna say, if it's 39,300, actually we're gonna do 39,301, it's less than or equal to our household income. And less than what was that magic number here? 52,400. So it has to be less than 52,400. So we'll say 52,399. And then that equals income five equals two. So if it equals 39,301, all the way up to 52,399, then that's gonna be coded as two. All right, if, now we're gonna do the next one. We can do, if it's 52,400, or a 401 actually to be specific, less than or equal to household income less than 65,499. I know this may seem tedious, but it sure beats doing it by hand. Especially if you like two million things instead of like 3,000. All right, income five equals three. If I can type. Next, we're gonna do if, what do we got? If 65,500 less than or equal to household income is less than what? Uh, 78. 599 then income 5 equals 4 all right if and then the last one is 78 600 less than or equal to household income less than actually it doesn't matter I can do this one a little differently I mean I could if I knew the upper value but on this particular one, I can just tell it if household, if household income is greater than or equal to 78,601. See, 78,601 or more. Then, I like all caps there, it may not matter. Then, income five, equals five and then that's pretty much all now if i hit run here i'm going to end up i think with an error because of the way this data set is set up if you remember right so i'm going to hit run and nothing's showing up here i look at the log something with this format f thing so i can go back to the code and if you remember I type in format 
underscore a l l underscore semicolon it will reformat everything in here or, or tolerate all formats a little better now if i had any number files or certain unique coding schemes uh, it may reset those but uh, we'll go ahead and run it this way and it looks like it's done everything we needed it to do i can look on income five and there is income five ranging from one to five where I would know, you know, what one equals that, two equals that, three equals that. There are ways of, of double checking that. One of which we'll do here in the next video. We'll be uh, looking at this newly created categorical variable. So where is this set at? It goes away. Well, if you look over here, we created a file called um, rankquartile2.sas.bdat. If I go to my libraries, um, I can actually look in my libraries and pH data, rank quartile2. In our code, you see we, this is, we were using MPH, the data set we were using was the, that one. What did we create? We created that one. We can run it again. I'm gonna create one called rank quartile3. Run it again and let's see what happens. My libraries, and pH data, there's one called Rank Quartile 3. So it's going to be there. If I want to run summary stats on that, I can go to my task and utilities, data. Um, we don't want to use data, we're going to do stats, summary statistics, and then I can find, I have to click on this. And I can go to MPH data and I can find rank quartile three. And I can analyze columns if I'd like to. Um, we can look at household income and we can look at household income by our newly created income five category if we want to and see how it behaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that just so you can see. And we'll zoom in on this. So let's see how we compare 39,300 or less, pull this over, it is a way of double checking yourself, 39,300 or less, so that maximum is less than 39,300, 52,387 is below 52,400, 65,469 is below 65,500, 78,596 is below 78,600, and then um, obviously, you know, the upper category. So the upper category is above 78,601. The minimum value here is 65,504, which is above 501. So it looks like everything worked out all right. So just a little bit on manually coding data, manually coding, data cleaning, all that stuff is some of the most challenging, tedious aspects of data analysis, but um, it's something that we have to be able to understand that if-then logic. So we used a not too complicated example, but enough to have enough symbols in there that you can maybe figure out how to write your own code if you had to do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here and uh, we'll start exploring the data and getting more into the action uh, without the manual coding uh, going forward.